Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our usual Thursday morning Catalyst program. Uh, my name is Tom Addis. I'm the executive director and CEO of the Southern Cal PGA, and I'm subbing this morning uh, for our usual host and education chair, John Kulo, who happens to be uh, fishing, that's what he says anyway, uh, up in the Bishop area, up in the Sierra, so very near to Mammoth Lakes, and uh, uh, we wish John a great week up there, and, and uh, it's a great place if any of you have ever been up there in, into the Bishop Mammoth area. It's exceptional. So, uh, And if you have, and if you do, a little plug here, uh, Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory in Mammoth Lakes is my wife's uh, uh, little store, so stop by and pick up a caramel apple. That was uh, unsolicited, and I apologize. Um, <laughs> we have a very, very nice program this morning, and we're very pleased uh, to welcome Ken Farrell, uh, Southern California uh, uh, career consultant. And Ken is going to welcome in uh, Ed Winecki, who is our new Southern California career consultant. Uh, Ken is going to handle executive search and for some unknown reason is going to handle uh, Aloha, the Hawaii section. Uh, so, you know, that's probably not too difficult to figure out. Uh, Ed might be kind of shrugging his shoulders a little bit, and uh, hopefully we'll have Kendall Murphy, who is the new uh, Northern California um, career consultant, join us this morning as well. So uh, Ken's been with us, and, and of course, I've known Ken, uh, I think, nearing uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 years now, yeah. and, uh, and it's been a pleasure. I've known Ed for 20-some years, so uh, it's been a, a great association and two of our uh, e exceptional PGA members, PGA professionals, and uh, always been engaged and involved uh, from the very beginning and from, the, from the, the time I've known them and really appreciate that. And they've continued this involvement uh, and dedicated themselves to you as a PGA member. All yours. And, and uh, actually, my first experience with Mr. Tom Addis was at St. Hills Country Club. It probably was 50 years ago. Um, I put my fishing pole in my bag and went past one of the holes on Willow Glen, threw it in, caught a big bass and sat there and fished and told my group, I'll catch up with you. And Mr. Addis came out and had to let me know that this was a, <laughs> a place to golf rather than a place to fish. And uh, I'll never forget that experience, but uh, thank you, Tom, and thank you to Tyler for setting this up for us so that we could uh, speak with you. Before I get started, there's two things that I'm going to ask you to do, because I know I'll probably forget beforehand. Um, if you would, every member and every associate, if you would go on to pga.org and complete your compensation survey, keep in mind we haven't had one uh, done in the last couple of years. So the information that we have is a couple of years old and keep, and, and also remember that that is the information that both Ed and I use on your behalf to try and negotiate up the positions out there. So the more information that you, uh, that we get from you, the more relevant the information is, the more relevant that the uh, survey is. And then of course your profile helps you receive uh, job notifications under your account manager. So uh, if you would do those two things, we would greatly appreciate it. So I've been in this position for 11 years and have thoroughly enjoyed working with all of you out there. I've probably learned far more from you than you have from me for sure, but it's really been a privilege to work with you. And uh, that is the great part of this business is on behalf of our members and our associates working with Tom and Nikki and Jeff and the section going out to employers and in reality telling them how great the PGA is and how great the PGA members are uh, because that's what we do. We meet with employers every day and we're, we're uh, trying to help them understand why they should hire a PGA profession. So so after 11 years, I'm actually stepping over to a new position, and that position is going to be in support of uh, Southern California and support of Northern California. 
uh, to our two new consultants that were hired. Uh, I'll retain Hawaii through COVID. We'll see what happens after that, uh, but it would be difficult for anybody to probably get anything done over there uh, without actually visiting it and, and not knowing those people. So we'll see what happens after COVID. Uh, and then uh, probably my most prominent role once we get these two in full swing and gear is uh, executive searches, which is really going to be the core of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so I did want to introduce uh, both new consultants. Carol Pence was the Northern California career consultant. She and I started together 11 years ago. She retired at the end of the year. So the PJ has hired Kendall Murphy. Um, Tyler, if you'll jump to the next uh, slide. There you go. Kendall Murphy actually grew up in Oakland. So he's from Northern California originally. Um, and he's a uh, assistant director and program coordinator for UNLV. The neat thing about that is I had to uh, privileged, I think, about four times to go over to UNLV and present to their PGM students, which really uh, is something I just love to do. Uh, and Kendall set everything up for me, and we'd always have a great time. But uh, Kendall's got some amazing uh, accolades for sure. Uh, serves as the honorary president in Southern California chapter, so he's gone through the officer corps in the, in the uh, Southern Nevada chapter. Uh, but he's been the 2018-2019 PJ Professional of the Year in that chapter, which is pretty darn good. In fact, he just got back from Augusta National. He was part of the uh, ceremonies with Lee Elder and uh, has some great stories there. He's just a very accomplished person, and he's going to be a great consultant up in Northern California. Kendall, are you on? Okay, it doesn't sound like Kendall is on. So let's go ahead and move Tyler to the next slide and I'll introduce Ed. Ed shouldn't be uh, um, unknown to very many of you. And the reason is, is Ed was a member of uh, Southern Cal section for Ed 20 years or so. How long? Yeah, that's about right, Tom. Uh, tw or, uh, Ken, sorry, uh, 21 years. Okay, 21 years. And if you take a uh, look at a couple of things that Ed accomplished, one, he's been on the board of directors. He and I served on the board of directors together, which was really neat. Uh, and um, he's got a lot of board experience, leadership experience. Um, he went through the officer corps up uh, in the Northern California section. He's been the IE uh, president, uh, which is pretty cool. Let's see, selected. 2010 Golf Professional of the Year in Southern California, and then selected 2017 Golf Professional of the Year in Northern California. Ed, I heard a comment the other day, somebody stated that you were the, I think you're the only one that's ever done that in the state of California, is that correct? That's what I understand, yeah. It's uh, uh, unbelievably humbling to even think about something like that. So, your Horton Smith was in Southern California, and that's now called the Tom Addis Award, which is pretty cool. Um, I thought that name change was one of the neatest things that we've done. So um, AGM, but, but Ed also is a uh, certified club manager. Somehow this slide didn't get changed. It says CMAA, but it's also a uh, uh, certified club manager, so CCM. Ed, can you tell us what that entails and why that's important. Sure, thanks, Ken. Um, well, it's we all know how proud we are to wear our PGA badge. And uh, once you've gone through and became a, a Class A member, uh, everybody knows on this call, if you've done that, the dedication of hard work you've put in, uh, the hours, the time, the financial commitment, uh, the support from your club or your course and your uh, supervisors along the way, that same commitment um, is what the Club Managers Management Association of America has for the certified club manager. And the certified club manager requires a 10 years being associated, being a, a member of the CMAA, uh, requires five BMIs, which is business management institutions, uh, institute, I should say. And those are week long, um, basically concentrated education all day uh, and they're around the country. So they're, they're uh, in Southern California, uh, they're in Boston, they're in Atlanta, 
they're all around the country. And so it requires uh, weeks of education, uh, hundreds of hours leading up to that. Um, well, the, the biggest commitment is money. So uh, it's, uh, it was equated to about $38,000 worth of uh, all in when you consider everything in there um, to get the CCM certification. Um, so it's, it's a very proud to be a uh, class A professional, PGA professional, and also a CCM. Um, and there's, uh, you know, it, it, it raises the status and it was very hard to achieve like the PGA professional. But I would say that um, I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. And I would recommend it to anyone who is looking to become a general manager or a director of golf uh, or an executive management. Um, because one, it not only raises your status and in, in, increases your education, which uh, we all know how important that is. Um, and I always say, if you stop learning, you stop trying. So um, it's a very important thing. If someone wants to go down that path, I would be happy to talk to them about what what it entails, how to get there, how to get involved, um, and, uh, and along the way, because uh, that those three letters behind your name uh, raises your status tremendously, just like the PGA does. So I'm very proud to have accomplished that uh, wonderful thing. And, uh, and again, I'd be happy to be a mentor or talk to anybody about how that works. And if there's anybody on the, on the call today that is CCM, uh, they know what I'm talking about. So thanks again for giving me a chance to explain that. Thanks, Ed. And, and uh, there's tremendous value to that education and that title in the boardroom. So when a selection committee is looking at candidates, they see that and it has a lot of power in the boardroom with regards to um, your expertise level, your education, and the things that you've done outside of the normal course of your, of your work. Uh, so well done there. And it's really gonna be nice for you to be able to mentor others uh, with, uh, to that designation. So, so that's great. The other thing I did wanna note here is it says served as assistant and head professional, tournament director, general manager, regional manager, and executive director. One of the reasons that that's really important is because everybody that fits within those titles are gonna be reaching out to Ed, and Ed understands the position that you're in, what you're going through, and he has experience in all those areas. That's one of the, I think the uh, the opportunities that I had is I think I had I think I've been in nine different classifications and it wasn't always because, you know, I got kicked out of one and into the other. I think there was just always opportunity for me in my career to take the next step. And when I was an assistant golf professional, I never really thought about G being a general manager, but the opportunity was there, and I got the opportunity to open up a new club as a general manager and. And those kinds of experiences help us as career co consultants help you achieve your goals that you want to. So uh, well done, Ed, uh, at this point. We are extremely excited to have you aboard as the career consultant. This is a great hire. And I told the PGA uh, when they were starting this project, I said, you know, we've got to find somebody great for Southern California, the mighty Southern California, because they're such a leader uh, throughout the country. I mean, we've got a national, who has a national past president uh, uh, for an executive direct, director? Nobody, but Southern California. And of course, our leadership all the way throughout our section staff and our officer corps and our board of directors is just amazing. So Ed's a great fit. So let's go ahead and move on to the next slide, Tyler. Um, as, as I mentioned, uh, Kendall and Ed will be taking over there. I'll support them. Uh, and then working on executive search. So the things that I wanted to share with you, and if you remember, Paul Levy was our, actually, I think Ed and I were on the board together with Paul Levy. And when Paul decided that he uh, wanted to run for national office, he really did it on a platform of employment. And I'll, I'll never forget the push that he made to do that and how that helped us get where we are today. It really did. We greatly increased the number of career consultants, added a lot of money to the national budget, created some new programs to help benefit PGA professionals to become smarter, better, more qualified, more skilled through education. And Paul 
continued to push that as a platform all the way through. And, and that's something that I always appreciated from him. Uh, he really, really drove employment and career consulting through his platform, which was great for us uh, and great for the PGA members. So um, one of the things that he really wanted to accomplish because he was a general manager was the executive search space and executive search we had the opportunity, uh, and again, uh, another great thing that our section did was get Kirk Reese on, uh, whether it was last week or the week before, I'm not sure. And Kirk went through all the things that a recruiter looks for. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but since he went through it so thoroughly, we're just going to add bits and pieces to this presentation. But essentially what happens is, and, and this just happened uh, twice in the last what, maybe two weeks, two, three weeks, um, Ed and I were approached to do a search together at El Caballero um, for a new director of golf. And then I talked to a general partner of Carmel Valley Ranch Golf Club in Northern California, and we're going to be doing an executive search for a new director of golf up there as well. So executive management positions include generally a general manager, director of golf, head professional, director of instruction. We completed not too long ago a director of instruction position up at uh, up in the Monterey Peninsula, Monterey Peninsula Country Club. That was a big job. I mean, that was a big job. In fact, I think they posted a salary of 200,000, or excuse me, 150,000 plus a percentage of lessons, which was significant. Um, up to a position of about $250,000, $275,000. Maybe that's needed up in that area because that's a high cost of living area. But, but uh, uh, typically management positions are ones where you would oversee a department, a budget, you would hire, train, lead, motivate, and potentially terminate staff. Those are management level duties. And that's pretty much where executive search falls. In most cases, the executive searches, when an employer reaches out to us, is generally from a high-end private club. Not always uh, the case, but generally it's from a high-end private club. Uh, but I'll show you some of the ones that we have done in the past and been successful in. So Tyler, next, uh, next slide, please. This is the brand that we put together. We do have a page, a career services page on LinkedIn, which is pretty impressive. So if you're hired through uh, a search process, you're gonna be highlighted on that page. Um, and then uh, Tyler, let's go to the next page. Actually, Tyler, go back to the last slide for a second and then just leave that up. So I wanna talk just for uh, just a moment about the role of a recruiter. The first thing is, is when we're hired as a recruiter by the club, we represent the club. Obviously we represent you because one, we're all PGA members, we work for you. Um, really what the recruiter tries to do is find a great marriage between club and candidate. And what eventually happens is you'll end up if you get to the finals, you'll probably end up in a group of two or three candidates and all two or three of those candidates are phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal PGA members prepared for this position. But then the club really in the search is looking for a cultural fit. And every club is different. They have their own culture. And the question is, is do you fit that culture? So for example, you may show a history of of developing great family programs and they have a, a, a club that is very family orient, oriented, you would fit that culture really well. But by the same time, if you're uh, interviewing and you have all this history of family programs and it's an all men's club, you may not fit that culture like you would a family club. So that's what clubs are doing and that's what we help them understand um, um, who they are and trying to find that perfect marriage. So 
uh, let's see, understands who the club is looking for. So we would go to the club and do a review of the club, uh, clarify the role and responsibilities. We help them establish the job description, the compensation for the position. Again, that's why the compensation survey is so important is because they'll come up and say, we're thinking, or we have budgeted X amount of dollars for this, um, but are we offering enough to attract the candidate that we say we want? And in most cases, Ed and I will be able to increase that compensation or the benefits to that uh, position. And again, our, our main tool is that compensation survey. Um, and then sometimes we even look at governance and leadership. And in a lot of cases, we're working with their board and a lot of cases on their committee are not only board members, but officers of the club. And sometimes that can be a real challenge because those are generally type A people and our job is to get them to work together to focus on the candidates. So we handle all the administrative duties of the search, which we'll talk about a little bit as well. Uh, let's see. One of the things we ask the clubs to be is as transparent as they possibly can so that you understand more and are able to prepare for the club. So generally when we're hired to do a search, I ask the club to make their web page or their website available to the candidates. A lot of times if it's a private club, you won't be able to get in, um, but generally we'll be able to get you in as a guest so you can read their newsletters, find out what the club is, is, uh, has been doing, find out if there's any renovations going on, different things like that. I did a search one time at La Jolla Country Club and they put their newsletter right on the reception's counter purpose, purposely. And the reason is, is because they want to see if the candidates were going to pick up the newsletter and read what was going on. Interestingly enough, we had nine candidates we interviewed and only three picked up the newsletter and even knew they were doing golf shop renovations. Um, and that position, uh, they were offering the golf shop uh, to the person as well. So. Those are the kinds of things that Ed and I can help you with when you're preparing for an interview. So Ed, I'll probably ask you to, to uh, join in on this one. As you're preparing for these high level positions, and often these positions are 150 to $350,000. And again, I'll go back to what Paul said. I want PGA professionals to have the opportunity for these high level positions. So Ed and I's job and Kendall is to prepare you as much as we possibly can for these high level positions because the salary uh, is, is extremely high in many cases. And we want PGA professionals to be in those positions, especially general manager positions, because we know if a general manager is a PGA professional, they're likely to hire a PGA professional, which is a good thing for sure. So so the next thing I have to say is, is really sharpening your sword, preparing for some of these high level positions. So a couple of things uh, would be things like uh, college level classwork, yeah, getting a master's degree. Uh, you know, a four year degree when I was growing up in the industry wasn't that important. And the reason is so many of us came off the mini tours trying to play and then it was kind of a who's who, you know, I talked to Tom and Tom talked to Bill and Bill talked to Ed and, and Ed said, I need a guy and send me one. And, and well, I know a guy named Ken Farrell and you know, and that's kind of how hiring used to work. Um, and I talked to so many members that say, geez, Ken, I haven't done a resume in 20 years. I've never needed one because I've always just been kind of referred to, the, to uh, uh, the next person, that kind of thing. But that's no longer the case always uh, in our industry anymore. So degrees have become more and more important. Uh, important. Of course, there's PGM programs uh, like the one that Kendall directed. Uh, there's 18 of them and, and uh, you know, they come out with a four-year degree. They do four internships, three three-month internships and one six-month. So by the time they come out, they, uh, they have a four-year degree once they get their first job, they become a PGA member and they've, had, they've done four internships. For any of you hiring people, there's 18 of them out there. And that's one of the first places I would look for uh, staff is interns. 
Uh, it's a great experience for them. It's been a great experience for us as employers as well. Shadowing a content expert. I don't know why people don't do this all the time. I remember at one of my business schools, Hank Haney said, you know, I, I, I was concerned about my teaching ability. So I would go to the driving range and sit there and watch people teach or watch people hit the ball. And I'd say, this is what I would do with them. Then I'd see the PGA professional come out and do something different. And that scared me because I wasn't sure I knew what I was talking about. So I went to the best of the best and I started shadowing them. At the time, Hank Haney had the program, the Academy down at PGA West. This was when I was an assistant professional. And so I drove down there, kind of sat at a bench in the back and he saw me and waved me over and I spent two days with him. What did it cost me? The gas to get out to uh, the desert and back. And what an experience that was. Uh, and one thing about it is people love to share their expertise. Uh, so you'd be surprised at how many people uh, would uh, allow you to shadow them. Uh, boy, if I could shadow Ed during his daily duties as a general manager, it'd be a phenomenal experience. And the other thing too is how do you really understand what it is you want to do unless you maybe have shadowed or spent the day in the life of somebody's shoes. So um, certification, CMAA certification, PGA certification, absolutely critical. Uh, keep yourself relevant and current in the industry. Optimize networking, brush up on your contacts, and renew, clean, up, uh, clean up your files and any work product that you have prepared to make sure. And the great thing about it is Ed and I have looked through a thousand resumes and we've listened to employers look at resumes. So we understand a lot of what they want. Keep in mind one thing that the cover letter really kind of shows your personality, meets some objections as to you're from Texas and, and you're sending a resume to California. That cover letter should state your familiarity with California or the fact that you have family there or why you fit the culture of California or vice versa. Uh, that's your opportunity in your cover letter. And then your resume uh, states facts. And really what it is, it states facts of accomplishment, not job duties, and what your job duty was, but really accomplishments. It's absolutely critical. So Ed, Ed and I can help you with those for sure. Next slide, uh, Tyler. Okay, prominent search firms. You should know these search firms. You should be looking at their websites. So there's Copland, Kubler, Wallace, KKW. Um, just go to their site. They post jobs all the time. You should submit a resume to them. Um, and try and build a relationship with them. Uh, Dennehy Club Thinking Partners, that was uh, Kirk Reese that uh, was on uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, GSI Executive Search, GBN, Golf Business Network. Uh, of course, the PGA of America. These are all search firms, and there's more that list GM positions, director of golf positions, director of instruction positions, head professional positions. Hopefully that you have them uh, saved in your bookmarks and that you, should, uh, that you should be reviewing them to see what positions are available and building relationships with them too. Because keep in mind one thing, there's 29,000 PGA professionals, uh, PGA members uh, and associates, and you're in our database. These search firms have to build their database. They don't have the database like we do. In a lot of cases, these people will actually reach out to us and say, hey, I've got a great position in California. We're looking for candidates. Um, and that's happened to me more than, more than once, that's for sure. You know, and are we competing against these search firms? I've always felt I don't care about the competition, I just want the PGA professional to have the opportunity for the position. That to me is the most important thing. Um, you know, we used to do this for $5,000 and the employers used to say, or a search for $5,000, employers used to say, must not be very good because the other search firms are charging $20,000. Uh, that wasn't the case. The service was as high level. Uh, you know, we're just not a, 
uh, for-profit entity in career services. Uh, now the position has moved up, or excuse me, the search service has now moved up to $7,500, but it's still well below any, uh, any fee that any of these are uh, charging for it. And, so, and, and often uh, some of these fees are forty dollars to $50,000 for the service that they provide, but not to you, that's to the employer. So you can send them your resume, develop the, uh, the uh, relationship, and have opportunities for those positions as well. So uh, next slide, please, Tyler. Okay, so here's some of the searches that I've done over the past um, as the Southern Cal career consultants, not all of them, but it re represents uh, some of them, uh, some general manager searches, director of golf searches, had professional service uh, searches, and you can see there's some pretty prominent clubs in there. Um, typically, it takes about 90 days to do a search from the beginning to the end. That's what we'd like to have. I've done them in as little as 40 days out in the desert because the uh, committee members were leaving to their second homes back east or somewhere. Um, and then I worked with the Olympic Club, and that one took a year, uh, which was interesting. So. Uh, um, but 90 days is generally what we like to do. There's, there's a El Caballero, which Ed and I are working on, and then we just secured the Carmel Valley Ranch one as well. Um, we did a, uh, an AGM position at the Tradition Golf Club, and then we did a membership director a position at Red Hill Country Club, which was really interesting for me. Um, the, uh, let's see, and then you see over here, um, under director of golf search, Tradition Golf Club as well. So we did the search at Tradition Golf Club for director of golf, and then they called us back to do the AGM position. That's generally how it happens, the networking. So you are our best network there is out there for searches. And right now, what we're trying to do in career services is to ensure that part of the fee that we bring in for a search that we can get some of that money over to the sections that we serve, uh, which is a great thing. So if you're able to help us with a search, in other words, if you know somebody's leaving, let's say you're a director of golf and your general manager is leaving at your club, reach out to us and let us know that. We may be able to do a search for them and get the opportunity to a PGA professional. And the second thing is, um, if I have my way, some of that money's gonna go to, the, uh, to your own section as well, so. Uh, next slide, please, Tyler. So here's the three levels of searches that we're doing. Uh, the first is called an advance for 1,000, executive search for 7,500, and then the executive search plus, which could be any a range from $10,000 to thirty dollars or $40,000, depending upon uh, the club's needs and the amount of service that we're going to provide. Uh, so just quickly, I'll start with the advance. The advance really is we post the job for them. As you know, anybody can go to pga.org and post the position for free. We post the job for them, we collect the resumes, and then we uh, uh, sort through the resumes and then move those that are qualified to the uh, employer themselves. And, uh, and then we offer some administrative support there. The uh, Tyler, next slide. We use the PGA compensation data. We always want to be involved with the employer because it gives us the opportunity to discuss compensation and benefits. It's absolutely critical for us to do that so that we can actually match what they want and what they're offering together. And nine out of 10 times, we have the opportunity to increase that comp and those benefits. Again, there's the tracking and resu uh, review resume uh, support from uh, Ed or myself, in this case, at Kendall up in Northern California, um, and then some administrative opportunities for the advanced search. And again, that could be a thousand, that could be 2000. It's kind of up to us, depending upon the amount of service that they want and what it is that they, that they want uh, uh, to receive. So next one, Tyler. 
the executive search, it used to be called uh, Career Links Advanced, but we did away with Career Links. So that name is gone. If you remember, you filled out your Career Links profile. Now you fill out your job prof uh, profile on, on PGA.org. Uh, so we've changed this. This is now called Executive Search. This is the one that Ed and I are doing right now at El Caballero. Uh, so Ed will lead this one, guide this one uh, through the entire process. Uh, so all candidate correspondence, that means that we get uh, the list of people that the club wants to interview. They then get us those names. We then reach out to those candidates with the schedule that they've given us and schedule those candidates, uh, schedule the interviews. We actually sit in uh, the interviews, which is really, really beneficial for us because we get to see you interview. And then whether you were chosen or not chosen, we can actually go back and work with you on your interviewing skills as well. It really gives us an understanding of who you are and what your abilities are. And, and one of the main purposes of a career consultant is to help you be the best that you can be. So you'll wanna take advantage of that uh, pre-interview, post-interview, all those things. Targeted okay. and recommendations of candidates if requested. Uh, one way interviews, we do have a thing called Spark interview. I think Ed went through a Spark interview. Ed, tell us what that is real quick. Well, Spark interview, uh, thanks again, Spark interview is, um, it's really an all-encompassing uh, personality and traits. Um, it gets, it, it gets to know, they get to know your, how you think and how you make decisions. Um, and so if anybody who's ever been through a Spark hire or been through any kind of a Spark um, uh, webinar, you know what I'm talking about. It's they, they try to see what kind of personality you have. How would you re react to situations? Uh, what would you do under pressure? How would you handle things? And so it is a great indicator for, it can be a great indicator to help separate uh, candidates um, that may or may not be a good fit, depending on what the employer is, uh, you know, is focusing on specifically. Um, like one example would be, um, you know, facing members, you know, uh, front facing members, someone who would be the face of the club, if you will someone who is very outgoing, someone who's not afraid to get up and speak in front of crowds. Um, those types of things would be, uh, would be uh, picked out and, and noted in Spark Hire um, interview. And that would be noted whether it would be you are a, uh, you think you are, or you have experience with those types of things, which are very important, obviously. Um, so Ken, if I could add uh, one more thing with regards to getting to this point with the executive search, um, and just talking for a minute about uh, the education. So you mentioned briefly about how important it was with your PGA credentials, with getting involved with maybe with the CMAA, but I would also advise anybody on this call to um, branch out. And if you can get involved with the Golf Course Superintendents Association, uh, the Association of Golf Merchandisers, uh, and also the Golf Course Owners Association. Uh, those are all great associations to be involved with because what it does for you is it to, one, it, it allows you to get, uh, uh, enhance your network beyond many different things. And we all know that the, the, I think the saying still stands strong that knowing what you know is important, but who you know is also very important. And if you network within those associations and organizations, I think that's a, a huge um, bonus to you, not only as a professional, but in a situation where you never know who's gonna see your resume, you never know who you're gonna be sitting next to uh, in a room uh, at a superintendent's association. A uh, quick story, when I was hired um, to open a club uh, many years ago, uh, I was already a member of the Golf Course Superintendent Association. And, and when, my, when I met my superintendent, uh, he was on prior before I was, uh, there was a meeting coming up the following week. I go, hey, you want to go to the uh, Golf Course Superintendent Association meeting together? He goes, yeah, I'll go ahead and invite you as a guest. Well, I said, I'm already a member. He said, oh, wow, great. Let's go together. And, you know, that changed his opinion of for me, knowing what I knew anything about agronomy or not, uh, um, it was uh, it changed our relationship. So those are the staff and your own member uh, relationships with what what they, what you can do at your club. So at the end of the day, when you look at this slide here and you look at uh, how intense it is to go through an executive search, 
Um, the separators are just what I'm talking about, education, networking, um, and things that get, can get your resume on top of the pile. And not only that, get you an interview because uh, we all know that uh, having a great resume, um, people are looking for what's, are you, you're, are you better in person or are you better on paper? So they want the people who are better in person. So not that a great resume is not gonna get you there, but I thought I'd throw that in. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, we'll talk about cultural fit here um, uh, when we get to the next slide. Don't go there yet, Tyler, but, but those things are so important. And Ed, if I'm not mistaken, the spark hire is actually a one-way interview, correct? Well, there is, that's a two-part. There is a one-way interview uh, as part of it. Uh, it's a two-part thing, but I will say that um, if, you, if you ever get in a situation where you have to take a, do a one-way interview, I would practice um, because the, the one-way interview specifically is you, they ask you questions. You have two minutes to make comments or write notes about how you would answer that question. And then you do a countdown. It says three, two, one on your screen. And then you go live talking to what appears to be yourself and answering the questions that were asked in the previous slide. And you have a time frame to do that. The, the, difficult, the difficult thing about that is there's no do-overs. You have to answer the questions in that time frame and move on to the next set of questions. Um, you can't erase it and redo the question. So it does show how you react quickly, how you react to certain situations. Um, and it's not easy. I, 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 I claim I'm a great uh, public speaker, but the one we interviewed really had me for a stump and it was much more difficult than I thought it would be for sure. And that is one where you're actually seen. Um, so think of how we used to do phone interviews. And really what you're trying to do is you're trying to qualify or disqualify a candidate through the phone interviews. The spark hires allow you to actually see the person, um, how they present themselves, which is critical, how they speak, different things like that. And if you ever do one of those, I'm, you know, you, you need to dress just like you're actually doing an in-person interview. We've had people sitting on their bed in their pajamas doing it. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what they were thinking. Uh, but you don't want to take those casually. Uh, those are very important. And really what employers are doing is they're trying to figure out, you know, do we want to move forward with this person for a, for a live interview, for a face-to-face -face interview? So uh, those are very important. And again, when you've got somebody like Ed that's gone through those, you can reach out and say, Ed, I've got a spark hire. I've got a, a one-way interview. Um, can you help me uh, with it? Because you've gone through this. Very, very important. So, so back to executive search for a, a minute. If you take a look at some of the other things, uh, uh, site visits is needed, uh, you know, pre-COVID and now we're starting again. Generally, I did up to four site visits for any of my searches. And the reason is the first was really to present our services. Uh, the next was to actually start to do the first interviews, the next one was the final interviews. Um, and then I would finish up. Sometimes actually they would ask the career consultant to come in and help them negotiate some of the contract points, which was important. Some, so sometimes that was a fourth meeting. You're doing a lot of different things in between that. And it may be some video meetings as well. Uh, but uh, those are critical meetings and in most cases, we're setting the agenda for those meetings as well. Keep in mind that everybody on a committee has probably done hiring. They're generally, because it's a high-end private, they're prominent people, business owners, um, some people in some pretty high-level positions. And as we all know, working in a private club, they think they know how to run golf as much as they know how to run everything else. Well, when you get in the interview room, generally, they want to take over, but they haven't really done interviews for a general manager or a golf professional. And in many cases, it's going to be their legacy. The hire is going to be their legacy because you would want that candidate that they hire to be on for a tenure of 10 years or more, if possible. So it's very, very critical for them to make the right hire. And you become a huge catalyst to uh, the entire process for them. So I've had several presidents walk out and say, uh, boy, Ken, you saved my butt, or this is going to be my legacy at this club, this new hire. You know, I can't thank you enough for the uh, support. Um, so 
it's not just the employer that's so important to us. The most important person is the candidate and our job in preparing you for some of these high level positions. Included in executive search are background checks. We work with a company called the ESA. Interestingly enough, it only takes uh, 49 bucks to get a background check. Uh, the PGA gets a discount if the employer uses them. That's actually part of the fee that we, uh, uh, that we send to them is included in the background checks. And then there's a two year placement guarantee. So let's say that Ed went through an executive search with the PGA and he lasted a year and a half, then we're gonna go ahead and provide the service again to them at no cost because there's a two year placement guarantee. And then uh, two-way interviews and interview scripts. Uh, we have an entire manual, uh, which we developed out of necessity uh, on the process of managing through an executive search. It's pretty intensive, but it was again out of necessity as we were working with uh, clubs, we realized some of the tools and resources that we needed. And, I'll give you an example of how these things uh, happen. Um, Tom Addis worked for a great gentleman who was one of the owners of Singing Hills Country Club. He was also an owner, uh, or excuse me, he was also a member at Bohea Country Club, who at the time was looking for a director of golf. And so that person got to Tom, Tom got to me, I got to La Jolla Country Club and made a presentation. And uh, we went to work for them. And of course, Clint Whitehill is the director of golf there. He's phenomenal. He's everything that they ever uh, had hoped to have there and, and uh, owns the golf shop there. And we're very proud to be a part of that process. But that's really the way that these executive searches work and also the key way that they're promoted as well. So, um, you know, we, we appreciate your support in helping us do this. Uh, and uh, securing these. And the, re the main reason it's so important is because we want the PGA professional to have the opportunities. So, okay, uh, uh, Tyler, let's move to the final service. And this is Executive Search Plus. This could be anywhere from $10,000 to $40,000, depending upon depending upon what happens. I do want to say one thing, and this is a change in the, in the, uh, uh, the view of the PGA of America. When I first started the PGA of America, uh, their policy was not to support or refer any one candidate. We simply presented the names, the employer did all the work, and that was it. But now in reality, Ed and I may be looking at resumes to ensure that the candidates are qualified that are moving forward to the to the employer and i've been asked in interviews once a committee has decided who they want to interview ken who did we miss i would never say look you're going to interview ed winicki i would interview ed i would never say that to an employer i would support ed in every way, shape, or possible to be the best candidate that he could be. But I will tell an employer, I noticed that you um, didn't have Ken Farrell on the list. And I do know Ken personally, uh, and I do know the position that he has and the job that he's doing at his club. So I might ask them questions such as, you know, why did you not choose him? What was it on his resume? made you not choose him for an interview. Um, and in a lot of cases, we've actually moved those people forward to the interview, uh, interview room when the committee originally hadn't chosen them. And then in some cases, they even got the job because they were the best candidate for it. So it's important that you know, Ed and I are here to support you so that you can be the best you can be, but we need you to do your job as well. And what that means is we need you to get certified. We need you to reach out to the CMAA and become a member. We need you to, to get the education that you need. We are there for you to help you be the best you can be and to get you to everything that you need to get these positions. It's critical that we send you 
a great PGA professional to an employer and get hired because that's probably going to enable us to work with another employer because they talked to that club where you were successful and they said, look, you were able to hire Ed Winicky or assist X club to hire Ed Winicky and they just love him there. Can you help us do the same uh, with, uh, with our search? So it's absolutely critical that you be the best you can be so that we can uh, get you into these positions. This predictive index behavioral assessment, I'm sure probably most everybody on the call has done these. I know that we as career consultants did them as well. The interesting thing is there was 15 questions or 50 questions um, on the assessment. And I got through 18 of them. And I thought, wow, I failed this incredibly. But interestingly enough, it's not a pass or fail. Uh, it probably showed that I'm a procrastinator and also probably showed that I won't make a decision unless I'm sure it's right. Um, and I thought, boy, I don't know how they're going to take me. But when I got my assessment back, it just showed my nature, my tendencies, kind of who I am. Am I a personality fit? And I'll tell you why the predictive index is so important. I worked with a club on a general manager position, excuse me, on a director of golf position. The general manager was a complete type A personality. So can you imagine that if they interviewed a bunch of directors of golf and they chose a director of golf with a type A personality? You can imagine that general manager and that director of golf probably probably go to bat against each other and want to kill each other every day. The personalities just didn't fit. That's part of the uh, cultural fit that we're talking about. Ed, any comments on that? No, I, I, I agree. Uh, no, I think that what's, um, I, you said it perfectly. I, sometimes I, I can't supersede what you do and, and uh, that was said as well. That was said perfectly. Great, thanks. Uh, let's take a look at the, the last one, the last couple of bullet points here. Facility operations, board level consulting, available with Michael Lemus. Um, and there's a one-year agreement. Uh, Michael was the general manager at Oyster Bay, congressional. He's an amazing person. And the PGA has... Uh, secured Michael as a consultant. Michael's out of the East. I believe he lives in Florida, if I'm not mistaken. And he's a pretty amazing guy. He's a former CMAA president. So he's a past president there. Just a brilliant guy. And he's on the East. So you're actually going to get Michael as part of this executive search plus um, as a, a consultant. And that includes potentially might going in and doing some, uh, some board governance, leadership, different things like that as well. So uh, that's got a lot, a lot of value to it. And then at the very end, you see a uh, three-year placement guarantee. So if somebody's not there for three years, then we're going to do the search again. This time, uh, there's going to be no fee attached. So... That's the summary of the various levels of executive search that we wanted to share with you. I thought it was important to present this to you for a couple of reasons today. The first was is that we had Kirk Reese a week or two ago tell you exactly what you needed to do. And he went through detail by detail. If you did not see his presentation, it's on YouTube. We can get you the uh, link so that you can see it. And here's a guy that's done dozens and dozens and dozens of searches. He spent time with, with uh, high-level committees at various clubs, and he knows exactly what employers are looking for. So he shared that information with you so that you can get prepared for these positions. So between Ed, myself, the section staff, any career consultant across the country, which you have access to, people like Kirk Reese, the relationships we have with industry experts, there's really no reason for you not to 
understand what it is that you need to do to be able to accomplish what it is that you want to do. And part of career planning is working with Ed now on your goals and what you have uh, intended for your career in the future. So you'll want to get together with Ed, do some of the career planning uh, strategy with him and say, look, I'm an assistant golf professional now. I want to be a director of golf. That's my goal. How do I get there, Ed? And Ed will help you plan out um, your career so that you can be prepared for that. I had Robin Shelton ask me one time, we were playing golf in a section event, and I thought, geez, what do you do for Robin Shelton? I mean, you know, between his education, which is absolutely phenomenal, between his positions, how do you help a guy like that uh, at such a high level? But Robin asked me, he goes, Ken, what should I be doing to prepare? You know, I don't plan on going anywhere. Um, I've got a great position. You know, I've got a lot of experience and education behind me. What should I be doing? And I kind of thought that for a minute. I said, boy, is there anything that I can help? Robin with. Uh, he was a regional manager for American Golf. He was the GM at Seacliff Country Club. And I thought, wow, you know, what do you tell a guy like that? Interestingly enough, I thought about it for a minute and I said, you know, you need to prepare for the unexpected because I'm not sure what's in your future. I just know how good you are. And I know that opportunity is going to come to you. And the positions that I ended up, did I ever plan to be a general manager? No. But I, ended up being one. Did I ever plan to be in education for nine years? No, but I ended up being a director of golf at a college. Did I ever plan to be a career consultant? I did tell Mike Lawson one time, I said, when you retire, I want your job. Uh, so I did think of that beforehand. And I built a great relationship with Mike. Um, one, he was my career consultant, helped me get a director of golf job. But the second thing is, is I wanted that relationship. So when it came time, that, that position was available, you know, I could pursue it and Mike could help me at least understand what the position was. So for many of you, it's a matter of preparing for the unexpected. By the way, Robin Sheldon is now the general manager at Newport Beach Country Club. Uh, you know, it's a huge job. It's an absolutely huge job. So for some of you, you know, you may be an assistant wanting to be a general manager. How do I get there? For some of you, you've achieved that. You said, what's the next step? And maybe the next step is your last job. Are you currently in your last job? You know, your last job may be, this is the one I'm going to hang my hat on. I'm going to be here for the next 10 years and then I'm going to retire. But those are all the things that a career consultant uh, can help you with. So, Ed, uh, any comments before we take uh, some questions? No, I think it's great advice. I, that was what you said about Robin was actually pretty important because, um, you know, I, I've always said to my staff and the people that I talk about, um, the most successful people are not the smartest. Uh, they don't have the most education. They're not the strongest, but they're, most, they're the most adaptable. So if you can adapt to any situation that you're put in and be aware that uh, how important that is to adapt, whether it's a good situation or a bad situation, um, that's really, really important. Uh, all education helps, but adaptability, uh, quoting Darwin, I think is uh, number one in my book. Thanks, Ed, and that's certainly good advice. Um, let's see, Tyler, Tom, Nikki, do we have any uh, questions for us? Uh, thanks, uh, both of you. Um, uh, we're running out of time a little bit. Uh, in fact, we are out of time, but uh, what I would suggest, uh, Ken, uh, I'm gonna provide your emails. Please. Uh, it's uh, kferrell, F-E-R-R-E-L-L, -L -L, at pgahq.com. Uh, and oh, there they are. Uh, so you can see them yourself. Very good. Um, and uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, send Ken and Ed uh, a note. Uh, the response time is very, very short, and we appreciate your time today. Uh, we appreciate what you both do uh, and what Kendall does in, in Northern California. Uh, and look forward, Ed, to spending more time with you. And, uh, and Ken, uh, always look forward to spending time with you. So uh, everyone, uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention this morning. Next week, uh, we have Bud Garmany of Garmany Travel, who will talk 
really about important travel protocols uh, as we start to get out and about uh, uh, through this pandemic. So uh, that will be very interesting. And again, thanks very much uh, to Ken and Ed for your time. And please don't hesitate to, <clears throat> excuse me, send an email uh, to either Ken or uh, Ed if you have any questions from today's presentation. Uh, this uh, presentation uh, has been recorded uh, and will be posted on SCPGA YouTube uh, on our website, as well as um, you will all receive a MSR credit for today. Uh, those who wish to view uh, the uh, seminar uh, on YouTube who didn't attend today uh, will have a short quiz that will be uh, provided in order to uh, uh, acquire your MSR or their MSR credit. So. Uh, again, thank you for today, Ed and, and Ken. Uh, thanks, Tyler. Thanks, Nikki. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.